All right, so now that we have the project open, there was two things I was gonna go over really quickly before we move over to Unreal. And we also have to do one final thing in here to send this to Unreal. So one of the things I wanted to go over was um, if you were not going to be using any type of procedural system where you were gonna have these be able to be editable within your engine that you're using, and you just wanted to use this for only baking textures, it's, you can do that, it's totally fine. Um, let's say you go to the base color and, or I'm sorry, you gotta double click on the main graph to access our um, attribute or parameters that we exposed. Let's say you had a green vehicle that was really dirty because it had been like on the street for a long time, abandoned or something like that, and I'm sorry, not step, but our default kicked that all the way up. You can take this uh, bitmap here and you can save this out and you'll only save out that image and you can just save it as whatever format you want within this list here and then you're just using those those bitmaps that are displayed on this and the, uh, the same rule applies for any of these bitmaps that you see being previewed up here so if you want this alpha you can t or this black and white image you can totally do that you can totally export it as a grayscale or an alpha uh, if you want your world normals same thing so that's the first one if you're not using a procedural system you just wanted to use textures totally can do that um, the other thing was in Maya before we move into Unreal I need to get this vehicle turned 90 degrees because unlike designer designer works in Y up but Unreal works in Z up and this is the current project I'm working in but it works in Z up so we need to flip this guy 90 degrees forward on the X I'm going to freeze his transforms delete his history and I'm going to export him out again saving over the OBJ that I had and uh, now if I go back to designer you'll notice the car has actually been turned so that's fine now we need to publish our material this is important so this is saving out the file so we can actually read it and import it into Unreal so what you need to do for this is you can come up to the SBS up here. Let's save this out and control S. The SBS up here and when you have that selected you'll notice this save icon up here turns on. Let's go to the arrow next to it where it says save, and, or I'm sorry, publish selected elements. So you do want this icon. When you publish this element it's going to bring up a save name file that you want to save this SBSAR file. This is what the file type that's readable within Unreal. And we're going to save this under proxy car 2, which is totally fine. And I'm going to save this within here. It's going to ask you what do you want to archive it as. I'm just going to leave it as is. And it should now be saved out. Okay, it's still saving. So while this is publishing the material, I'm gonna jump into Unreal. I'm gonna begin importing my vehicle over to Unreal or my mesh. So let's go to import. Let's navigate to where we have our mesh saved out, which is on my desktop. Here's my OBJ that I saved over again. I'm gonna open that up. Now I can't disable the auto generate collision or materials and textures. So I'll just import them anyways. And I'm just gonna get rid of them because I don't need those textures, there's just extra data floating around, or these materials, excuse me, because the extra data just floating around that I don't need. But again, it can read Lambert and it can read the, it can read Lambert, Balin, and Fong. You can bring those in from uh, their external program. So now, if we look at our static mesh, our static mesh is blank, has no materials assigned to it. And it has this collision box, which I don't like. I'm gonna have to redo the collision on that. I'm not gonna do it on these videos, but redoing collision on Unreal is pretty easy. And we need to see, okay, what is our glass? Since I have that material that I had made out specifically for this. So let's find it by going into highlight. So that's our car body. Let's highlight the other one. There's our windows. So I can drop this down to navigate to whatever materials I have. And I know I saved it out as a glass. And I have tinted windows since I use this on my other vehicle. Or our other vehicle. And so I can get rid of that highlight there. And we should be fine. So 
Next thing we gotta do, we need to get this new world material to be our SVSAR file. Let's check back in Designer. I believe this is now published. It is published. So let's go into Unreal. Let's go to the content browser and let's import our substance file. Now I saved the substance file to my external. So we'll give it just a second here. Demo proxy game demo folder and vehicles. And if you notice, doo -doo -doo -doo, here's our cars. There's our car SPSA file. That's for this vehicle here. And here is the one we just saved out for SPSAR file. And I believe these are some of the textures that come with it. So if we open that up, it's going to import that graph node that we made. We're going to create a material for this for the starter material of the first vehicle we make because you're instancing this as you're creating new textures. And I'm saving it within the vehicle folder is what we want. And we're making our material. So let's go ahead and import. It's going to import the textures really quickly with the substance file. And there we go. We now have our instance factory. We have our graph that we built from Substance Designer brought into here. And we have our instance textures that have been brought in as well. And if you notice, you can look at the size of the files, which is one kilobyte for the texture, but hmm, it's not showing it on here, but usually these say zero in terms of like texture size. Uh, but yeah, it exported in, I'm sorry, it instanced in our uh, materials, 2048s, resource size is zero kilobytes. And this is instance, so I mean, this will be changeable as we go. So now we need to take this material and we need to assign it to our vehicle. We gave the material name, let's select it, and then I'm going to just go ahead and assign it. So there is our vehicle. Cool. It's pretty much, I would say, ready to go at this point. So I can hand this off and show it off to whoever wants to see it. However, I want to see this thing in the engine running around in real time. What does it look like? Can I? What's it look like when I change it on the fly? So let's bring in our static mesh. It is tiny, so I'm going to have to go back into Maya and rescale that on another day. Not in this video. It's already looking pretty nice. Let's full screen that and let's increase the scale. Cool, let me make sure. Let me turn it 90 degrees and compare it to the other guy. I'll hold down shift and that allows me to drag it. Awesome. A little bit bigger. All right, cool. So now we can actually take a look at the instancing of the graph at that crazy glare going on there. So let's take a look at this vehicle and let's start trying to mess around with the parameters. So all those parameter graphs that we set up, all the parameter, the graph that we set up within Substance Designer, we can find all the stuff and all the work that we exposed in this proxy or in the uh, instance substance graph instance that you made. So when we double click this instance graph, it's going to pull up a parameter node. I'm going to full screen that so we can see some of our results in real time. It's going to pull up a instance graph of everything that we had exposed. Um, so we can come in and change our color if we want to. I'm going to see if I can make this shorter. Oh, nice, I can. So we can change our color if we want to. Green. Um, that's on a fly. It needed to refresh real quick. So we can also then come in and select that. And we can come in and we can decrease the coat roughness. Our dirtiness we can bring down. Um, same with our rust can come up, our dirtiness can come up. I mean, all the same stuff you had exposed already within like the other in Substance Designer, you can do right here in the editor. And we can even delve further into this by taking these graphs and in Blueprint, we can actually 
grab the variables of these names, these naming conventions. If you hover over it, it gives you the actual naming convention it's associated with. And you can expose those um, within blueprints to say on runtime, hey, change this material, I'll change that. Um, so for now, like that's how I would get a substance. That's how I'd pretty much get an asset from like model phase, textured through substance painter, into designer for exposed graphs, all the way up to getting it into the engine and working um, at this point. So I will stop the video there. If there's anything else that comes to mind that I need to mention, I will be sure to add another video to the list. Um, so other than that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys around next time for another video. If you have any questions or anything, just let me know and I will get back to you when I can.